What's up guys? Pretty nice win last war. Let's take a look here. 92.5% destruction. Uh, only got the one star on number one. Good try Sleepy. Two star on number two. Uh, number three was a pretty weak base. Um, kind of just spam looned on that one and got the three. Uh, but we're going to take a look at um, five attacks once again. Let's go through the war map here. Uh, we're also going to look at um, number eight here a little bit. I noticed we burnt quite a few attacks on number eight trying to pick up the three and actually never did. We even had Hank dip down and he uh, just snagged us the two star. But um, it's just one of those uh, common or maybe not so common anymore ring bases that we used to see all the time. So we will uh, watch the five attacks we're going to show and then we'll take a look at a few uh, attempts on number eight. Uh, not to call anyone out on a bad attack or anything, but just a, a hopeful uh, teaching point that maybe we can share and hopefully uh, pick up the three on a, on bases like this in the future with much more ease. So, anyway, let's start. Uh, first attack we're going to look at is the highest uh, Town Hall 10 three-star by Divine. And Divine did a Queen Walk La Loon attack. This was a pretty sweet attack, I thought. Um, let me see here. Oh, so he drops his king here. And I didn't talk to him or anything about what his plan was, but I believe he just wanted to sacrifice his king for some funneling and for um, obviously the CC lure. So the king gets that done some wizards behind it for uh, backup. Looks like they're going to get the archer tower as well. So Queen walks down up here at the northwest and she's going to walk uh, north and pick up an air defense, the queen, and take out the CC along the way. So let's watch this and watch this thing happen. Queen takes out the CC no problem. Look at this baby dragon over here. Takes out two balloons and then I believe uh, finishes off this wizard tower. So huge value for this baby dragon over here. Um, funneling and uh, picking off some towers. And nice early rage here. Very uh, important way if you're a queen walking uh, to be ready for that if you got uh, two or three point defenses especially town hall 10 level point defenses you're gonna most likely need a rage so queen's gonna continue doing work here comes the la loon portion king funnel um, assisting with the balloons moving in um, the only potential problem i thought that this raid might have had was uh he was fighting the blo uh, the air sweepers coming in here, um, and it all works out. Obviously, he gets the three star. But if these expos had been on air, uh, maybe it would have um, not played out so well. But they weren't. They were on uh, ground. Oh, and the infernos are on single as well. So there's just too many balloons for those defenses to take out. Uh, had those been on multi and the uh, Expos on air could have could have made for a different uh, outcome here, but nevertheless, it was a good attack, and I believe it was scouted, so he knew what was uh, expected, where the Teslas were, and obviously the uh, Infernos and their status. So good attack, Divine. Nice job, buddy. Um, next, let's look at. Mokor. Mokor brought a Queen Walk uh, delayed Valk. So 
this is kind of like base number eight, where you're basically trying to form a large funnel and then send in some uh, troops down the middle to take out the uh, high value core. And that's exactly what Mokor does here. And I thought he did it really well. I think he's been using this uh, Valk, uh, delayed Valk attack in the last few wars, so he's getting better and better at it. So this is nice to see a solid three star from it. Queen takes out the CC. Doesn't even use a Rage or Ability here. That is uh, gutsy right there. But if you do it right, you can get away with that. So he pockets a Rage, pockets the Queen Ability, which is always good to save that ability for a more opportune moment. And he's just taking his time here. Um, creating that funnel, you have to make a really wide funnel for these Valks. You don't want them to walk in any... Uh, other direction than down the middle. So the queen's going to work on that side and then I believe this uh, western side he's going to take care of with yep his barbarian king and some bowlers, CC bowlers too. And they're gonna finish off all these other uh, buildings on the other side of the funnel. Queen's going to continue to walk on the uh, east side. I'm not sure if she dies or not. But this is uh, what happens when you take your time and create a strong funnel. Check out these Valks. No wall breakers, just go through the wall in an instant, perfectly placed jump spell. It connected right through that entire compartment using to get both Infernos and Quad Tesla Farm. That was really nice right there. And that whole core basically disappears in a couple of seconds, especially that Tesla farm. <laughs> nice heel placement too for the uh, giant bomb Tesla farm, uh, Tesla farm combination. So the Valks come out really healthy and they're able to just finish running through the base, taking out the rest of the defenses. We'll speed this up a little bit since we got uh, five attacks plus uh, base number eight to look at for a short time. Nice attack, Moker. All right, next let's look at Dan bringing in HGHB, I believe. Shoot, which one was he? Uh, I think it's this one. So this attack, um, I want to highlight uh, how effective um, hogs can be when uh, you have your kill squad tanking for them at the same time, and then in, in, uh, at the same time how uh, less effective those same hogs can be even under heal spell when the kill squad is not tanking. So if you're Town Hall 9 and you like hogs and uh, you're trying to get better at them, uh, try to take that into, into consideration when you're planning your attack. So here comes his kill squad. He's going to take out the clan castle, the queen, all those important targets you need to take out uh, before starting your hogs. And Dan does it beautifully here with a nice jump spell, bowlers under rage, just... Uh, destroying everything. So here come the hogs and all these point defenses are distracted and these hogs are basically just murdering everything they come across without any heal spell or anything and that's beautiful hog deployment with the kill squad. But uh, taking a look at the second half of this base the kill squad kind of sticks in the middle slash south side I think and then the hogs are uh, forced to kind of take a, take on the rest of this uh, defenses over here without any help except from heal spells. So even under heal spell you can see these hogs are having uh, some difficulty. Yep, heal spell wears off and uh, yeah. So I thought that was a good uh, learning point to show. 
all the hogs die, but uh, fortunately, Dan has so much of his kill squad still alive, both hero abilities, a bunch of giants up to help tank. Uh, this Even with the hogs dying, this base is just going to get smoked. Hero archer up there at the north. Uh oh. She's gone. King ability. I mean, there's nothing left, left to uh, stop this raid. So, nice attack, Dan. Three star. Uh, next, we're going to see Megatron. Megatron's doing uh, another Queen Walk uh, La Loon. And uh, this ain't the greatest base by any means. Obviously, I mean, clan castles, hella exposed. Queen's hella exposed. But uh, even with such a crummy base, I like how Megatron took advantage of that. And uh, did, a, did a good scout. And he's going to easily uh, three-star this base because of its poor design. But also because of him recognizing the weaknesses. And... Uh, you know, getting the three star. Believe it, yep. Jump spell right there. I thought this was really cool. King walks up north and uh, uses the ability and gets the second air defense. Uh, at the same time, the queen walks over to the uh, west and picks off a third air defense. So I thought that was a really nice uh, kill squad here. Well, not kill squad, I guess I should call it a queen walk with a BK sacrifice. Really high value from uh, this opener here. And he's got so much air army left to deploy that uh, there's not going to be a lot this base can do. Try to be careful with uh, going into these sweepers. Oh, and also, really quick, just to pause. So this rage placement right here, for those of us that are uh, learning air attacks or wanting to get better at them, put this rage ever so slightly uh, ahead, a little more ahead of where these loons are coming in. So if the rage was right here, um, maybe right where this uh, wall edge is, these loons are going to zoom in to these uh, cluster of defenses and even though the, the rage if it's placed more to the left uh, the balloons actually hold on to that uh, enraged buff that they get from the spell um, and will uh, keep that buff and basically destroy buildings with the same uh, ferocity <laughs> Uh, even if they're not actually in the rage spell as they leave. But such a good attack, he, uh, you know, gets it done regardless. But just another uh, a tip there that to remember or to keep in mind. Same with haste spells. Um, put the haste spells um, kind of ahead of where you want them to go so that the balloons kind of speed in towards the defense and then from the defense speed out towards the next target so you kind of get like a double effect you maximize the, the uh, value of each spell nice attack Megatron keep it up dude um last we're gonna look at DLJ again um, let's see, where is he? DLJ had a pretty cool attack. This one brought me back to the, uh, back when I was at Town Hall 9, uh, doing, uh, Go Valo, when, uh, people would put all their air defenses in the core of the base, and you would send the strong kill squad to hollow the core out, and then send balloons in around the outside. And that's exactly what Jack does here with some Valks and CC bowlers so and this is really smart too I'm gonna pause the raid one more time um, potentially if Jack had put this jump spell 
maybe drop it, tapping his finger right here where the mouse is, he potentially would link um, some of these other compartments with that jump spell up here on the sides. And that's not really what he would want to do here. And I'm, sh I'm sure that's what his plan was to place the jump spell a little bit forward so that all he's connecting is the outside straight into the core. And that's exactly what he does and that's exactly where the Valks go. It would have been a shame if Valks had gone into these uh, outer uh, compartments. So nice plan, Jack. Really smart there. And this core is going to get evaporated in a couple seconds. And then here come the loons. And there's no way this base is going to stop uh, that many loons without any air defenses. So I'm going to speed it up. even bagged three balloons. Nice work. All right, let's take a look at base number eight really quick. Just going to um, show a few attacks um, against it. Again, not to uh, highlight anyone's bad attack or anything like that, but just to hopefully um, learn something from multiple attempts on this base. First, let's look at uh, Sad Daddy. Gives it an attempt here. So unfortunately, Sad Daddy brings a, uh, a mass bowler army to this uh, base. And the funnel doesn't quite go his way, basically causing his bowlers to uh, walk around the ring, which is what this base is designed to have your troops do troops walk around the ring and the infernos and the teslas in the core fry your troops uh, as they walk so looking at this base i mean it's kind of it's a little tougher to get that funnel uh completely going because he has these outer compartments stuffed with trash and it's hard to get troops through that outer compartment to the inner compartment to uh, complete the funnel and I guess we just didn't have anybody uh, crack this base on this war so this attack Peter's out there unfortunately nice try SD next we'll look at uh, GSU gives it a try um, I believe I'm highlighting uh, a bunch of different attacks yeah here so La Loon here but same kind of issue, I think, occurs. The funnel doesn't get completed, and then the balloons kind of circle around the base. Ooh, nice rage placement. Queen got a little low for a second. This was a really good try, though. I mean, um, Queen comes in. She lured the clan castle. I can't remember. There, oh, there we go. Hog to lure the clan castle. And now the queen starts shooting through the wall. I'm not sure why. Maybe she uh, saw the queen shoot that hog, and now she wants to go after the queen. It's probably what it was. And then here he comes with his uh, BK. Trying to uh, finish the funnel, that's my thought. But the funnel's not complete again, and the balloons are going to uh, loop around the, uh, the core, unfortunately. So again, we're going to pause super quick. Potentially a way to have solved this funnel here would have been to maybe deploy loons down on this side first, down here at the southeast, um, taking out these defensive buildings first. Um, probably would need some spells, I'm assuming, maybe some hastes. If, if all of this got taken care of, then the balloons coming in from the uh, northeast would have a better shot at uh, zipping straight into the core where you'd have, you know, a freeze and a rage and all that good stuff uh, waiting for them. Balloons going around. And 
they're basically just going to make their way around and not quite get into the core. Good try, GSU. And I know a lot of our guys know how to uh, beat this kind of a base. It just didn't happen this time, and uh, hopefully in the future, maybe highlighting this will uh, allow us to have an easier time. Finally gets balloons into the middle, but it's going to be too little, too late. Both Inferno's doing work. Yep, that's it. So good try, man. Let's back out. And we're going to look at Tudor really quick. Tudor tries a uh, delayed Valk type of an attack. And again, same kind of issue here. I think maybe it's just this ring base is a little trickier than the average ring base with these outside uh, long compartments here. It's difficult to complete a funnel to get troops to zip into the core. I was really hoping somebody would uh, pick up the three on this just so that we could show um, a few tries on the base that weren't successful. And then a, whoops, misplaced poison. No worries, buddy. Um, you know, showing the, the, showing the attempts and then showing a, uh, a success attack. But it didn't happen, but that's the way it goes sometimes, so no big deal. And Tudor's almost going to get the funnel completed here. It just needed to get these buildings here on the uh, east taken care of. But that doesn't quite happen. And maybe even this archer tower here would probably pull the Valks before uh, they went to the core. He'd probably need to get all the buildings down until about this dark elixir storage. But pretty close. I think if his queen had lived, she'd taken out these few more buildings. Uh, this bowler and uh, king uh, combination here got the job done on the uh, southeast. But the queen dying just didn't get the job done on the northwest. So I'm going to speed it up really quick. I think the Valks come in and they just probably... Uh, hmm. I guess they did go into the core. Maybe I should watch the uh, replays before I put them on the video. All right, well, good try, Tudor. Um, got the funnel done, but just uh, Valks all by themselves. They're not going to be able to take out the core plus all this uh, garbage around here. So good try. Probably the closest to a three star. If the queen had stayed up, she would have you know continued walking down. Valks would have come in, taken out the core. You know, if everything's timed appropriately. So pretty close, even though it's, you know, it's a one star, it's 47%, whatever, but doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't uh, close to a successful attack. So good try, man. All right, well, that's about it. Hopefully um, we can learn a few things from this recap and bring it for our uh, next wars. I think we got a pretty decent opponent coming up next. Gab Gabale's Empire. Gabales? Maybe they're like France. Okay. Well, let's take it to these uh, French dudes and uh, get another victory. Oh, good job, Last War, guys. Let's keep it up. See you next time.